Welcome to Fellowship Church. How's everyone doing today? Man, we're going to have a phenomenal, we are, are in the midst of a phenomenal service right now. Thank you for being a part of us. I want to say hi, though, to all of our different campuses, whether you find yourself in Miami, Northport, it's okay to clap, downtown Dallas, downtown Fort Worth, Frisco, Alasso Ranch, one of our prison campuses, online. Thank you for being here. Already, we've had some locations, uh, let me see, come up. From Mexico, we have some people watching. Kenya, the Ukraine, Germany, Italy. I can't pronounce some of these. Azerbaijan, India, United Kingdom, and Canada. Canada, Canada, Canada. Well, I do want to bring up at this time someone that I've gotten to know a little bit, Sadie. She is uh, seated next to her better half, Christian. Christian, would you stand? Christian Huff, stand, yeah. Christian Huff, totally buff. Yeah, anyway, 23 years old. And his lovely wife is Sadie Robertson Huff. See, I emphasize, see, Sadie Robertson Huff. I like that. So Sadie, podcaster, actress, Dancing with the Stars, Doug Dynasty, New York Times bestselling author. Also, you're gonna find out this girl was a phenomenal basketball player. Let's stand to our feet and welcome Sadie Robertson. Hub. Sadie, great to have you. Please be seated, everyone. Sadie, it's such a pleasure to have you at Fellowship. Thank you, good to be here. Good morning, everybody. Y'all have an incredible church and an incredible pastor and pastor's wife. These guys are amazing. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we've had the opportunity to interview your parents and that, that was cool. And also too, I was reminded when I walked on stage, one of the books I published, I published, I guess with your grandfather's company yes. back in the day. Wow, that's crazy. Small world. It is a small world. Sadie, listen, a lot of us know a lot about you. Maybe some are like, I know a little bit about this girl. Just tell us a little bit about your life, you know, from, from birth until now. You're 23 years old. If you can do that in 90 seconds, wow. I would appreciate that. Wow. Well, hello. <laughs> no, you can do it in five minutes. Starting at birth. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that would be, take way longer than 90 seconds because my life has definitely took some twists and turns just as all of ours has. Um, but yeah, I would, grew up in West Monroe, Louisiana. It's pretty small. Yeah, I heard a little woo. That might have been Christian. Oh, what's yeah. up? Yeah, okay, awesome. No, I grew up in West Monroe, Louisiana. It's pretty small. And um, my family grew up, um, my family's business was making duck calls. So who would have thought that a little, town in West Monroe with a family of men with giant beards making duck calls would somehow get famous one day. That is only by the hand of God because that's really bizarre. Yes. And never would we have thought that. We weren't even pursuing that or anything. Now, were you into uh, the outdoors like duck hunting and fishing and stuff too or not really as a young Youngster. Not really, not gonna lie. Not really. But okay, I did okay. help. I, I did answer the phone calls at the business when I was like, 13. Like, really? stuck commander. <laughs> uh, yeah, and me and my, uh, my cousins okay. all knew how to make the duck calls. We like loved to play around in the packaging and stuff like that. We played hide and go seek with the big packages. So yeah, we, we grew up, it was a family business, you know? But then whenever I was around seventh grade, my mom loves reality TV. And um, she was watching reality TV. I know, it's not like the best quality. Oh no, I love it. I love, no, no, I, I was just looking. Qualities. I was looking at a friend of mine who really loves uh, uh, reality television too. <laughs> yeah, she loves reality TV. Yeah. And one day she was watching it. She was like, Willie, like your family is that weird. Like y'all could have a reality <laughs> TV show. Like there's just a lot there. So anyways, my dad was the business manager at the time. He, he you know, kind of pursued that. And we mm -hmm. got a show on the outdoor channel called Duck Commander. And then, that's right, we got so old, yeah, you've been with us. And then uh, that became Duck Dynasty, and then years later I was on Dance with the Stars, and so a lot of different things happened. That's just what the public eye has seen. Obviously, I just grew up in West Monroe and went to 
you know, elementary, middle school, high school, and everybody else, and um, just started really pursuing Jesus. And I talked about this. Um, you know, I think even though Duck Dynasty was so amazing, Dance with the Stars was so cool, I think I just came to this moment in my life that I was like, this is awesome, but it seems so meaningless without, without purpose. And my purpose that I found in that was, man, we gotta give glory to God. There's gotta be something bigger than us in all of this. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I remember- so say- how, let, me, let me interrupt you for a second and ask Please you a quick see. question. All right. You're famous, and a lot of us look at you and we're like, wow, I want to be famous, you know? And, 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 and that's something, especially with the, with the young people, is it Generation Z, right? Yep, Gen Z. Okay. I actually, to be honest, thought I was a millennial till like last month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gen Z. <laughs> so what, what, what would you say about that? Because, you know, you have a squillion followers and all of that. I mean, yeah. because, yeah. wow, you're famous. Yeah, I think there's definitely like a hype around being famous, especially probably because social media and you can see a number. But my dad always says this. He's like, you know, who you are in your normal life is gonna be who you are when you're famous. There's nothing that fame does to add to who you are. And so if you have anxiety, you'd still have anxiety when you were famous. If you struggle with greed, you'd be really greedy when you're famous. Fame doesn't change anything. In fact, like everybody's in a sense famous because being famous is just being known by people. We're all known by people. So whenever you're famous on a big scale, it's just ma- magnified some of the things that you're, you're going through and who you are. So what I would encourage you with is being through fame and you know having that in a sense is that, yes, there are elements to it that are, that are cool, but it's so, again, meaningless unless you have purpose, unless you're doing it for something greater than yourself. And I remember whenever I was on Dance with the Stars, um, my parents had not let me have social media up until really the year that I was on the show. Um, And so I didn't have a big following. And then during Dance with the Stars, I literally gained a million followers in a month. And so my life changed so dramatically. And it was really scary. I I remember thinking like, whoa, like a lot of people like think this is cool, but it's terrifying me. Like it scares me that everybody's looking at me. It makes me feel a lot of pressure. Like I don't know what to do with this. Um, And that's whenever I kind of hid myself in God's word. Like I literally think of it as like hiding myself in him because then I don't have that pressure. I don't have that um, worry or that fear because I don't feel like all eyes are on me because when eyes are on me, I just kind of push it to him. Mm -hmm. And there's a beautiful thing in that. And so, yeah, if you're pursuing fame, if you're pursuing a stage, if you're pursuing a platform, I would say pursue Jesus first. And if those things come, that's amazing. But Christine Kane says this, if the spotlight on you is brighter than the light shining from within you, the spotlight on you will crush you. And I think that's really true. That's a great word. Mm-hmm. How, okay, what, what would you say, what would you say, Sadie? We have so many young people in our church, so many girls who are looking at you, you know, going, wow. What, what are some, some maybe pointers, some life hacks, some life lessons yeah. that, that you would just share with them yeah. What would you say? That's a great question. You know, I was just telling somebody backstage, uh, a couple of girls came back and they were asking me questions. And they were so sweet. They had so many questions. And she said, oh my gosh, I just tell everybody, I just want to be Sadie Robertson. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. But please be you. Like, I want you to be you. Please do not try to be me. Like, that's what my whole message is, live original. Because I, I struggle with that whenever I, I remember when I started speaking, um, you know, I actually grew up in a church where women didn't speak in the church, so I had never seen that model until mm-hmm. I was like 17. I saw this woman speaking, and I was like, that is so cool. Just everything she's saying is so powerful, and it's impacting everybody in here, and it's actually bringing people to Jesus, taking people from life, I mean, from death to life. Like, I want to do that. And so, so I love what she was doing, and I thought, I want to say words like that that matter from Scripture over people's life. So I wanted to do this. So then I started YouTubing, you know, Christine Kane, Priscilla Shire, Beth Moore, mm-hmm. all these different yeah. women speakers to learn from them. And then after I started learning from them, I started to get really intimidated thinking, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I don't remember telling them, I don't think I can do this. I was like, look at these women. They're uh-huh. incredible. They're so powerful and so strong. And I'm not really like that. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think I can do this. And she went, Sadie, 
You are not called to be Priscilla Shire. You're not called to be Kristen Kane. You're called to be Sadie Robertson. She mm-hmm. said, you can learn from them as you should. Always be teachable, always be humble, always learn from people, but you shouldn't try to be that person. And I think that was such good advice because you know you can look at somebody and say, man, I really like this element to who they are. I wanna learn from that. Mm-hmm. But if you start to say, I want to be her, then I think that's where the enemy can really start letting comparison creep in. There's a verse, Hebrews 10, 35. It's my favorite verse. It says, so then do not forget the confident trust that you have in the Lord, for that will be richly rewarded. I remember that verse really hit me when I was young because I used to like wanna be confident so bad because everybody's like, you know, you need to be confident. And when you struggle with insecurity, you're like, that sounds great. How do I do that? And I remember thinking like, but I gotta be confident. I gotta figure out how to be confident. So I like Googled how to be confident, scripture on. (laughs) And I really wanted to find a scripture and the Lord was like, because you are awesome, you should be so confident. And that's not what I found. But I found something so much greater. It was like, don't forget the confident trust that you have in the Lord for that will be richly rewarded. And that stuck with me because I actually don't have to be confident in me. I get to be confident in Him who is holy, holy, holy. I mean, that is an amazing thing. And so for girls, guys, whoever you are, you know, and if you're looking at somebody saying, oh, I wish I was like them, man, have confident trust in the Lord. When you're confident who made you, you'll be a lot more confident in who you are and mm-hmm. you won't be comparing yourself to left and the right. You'll just be able to run your race. And it's an amazing thing when you kind of grasp that. Wow. Sadie, man, this is girls phenomenal. I, tell us, all right, something about yourself that maybe we wouldn't know. We would be like, wow, I didn't know that about, about you. I mean. Well, should I tell my fun fact? That's yeah, you team? tell, that, that's a crazy story, yes. Okay, this has nothing to do with anything deep. But um, I actually was telling him backstage that whenever I was younger, well, he was like, you're a basketball player. I'm like, yeah. And then Christian was like, and tell him what else, tell him what else. I was like, oh gosh. I threw javelin like very competitively. <laughs> And that is that's just the not long, something you A javelin, hear. you know, is the long yep. stick with the chunk kind of and a spear. A that's spear. really what I did. And y'all, I was like going to, I wanted to go to college for that. I was like, for real, for real. So that was really funny. I was telling him, I'm like, man, God's ways are higher than your own. Cause I was like, I'm going to go to college for javelin. I'm going to be a javelin thrower. Look what the Lord did. Didn't go that fast, <laughs> but uh, it was a good time. It was a good time. I don't think I've ever met a, a lady who is an expert javelin thrower. Have you guys? That, that's, that's interesting. And if you are one, please come talk to me. That would be yeah. great. <laughs> We'd be great friends. How, Sadie, have you balanced? Because obviously you, Christian, are great Christians, your family, uh, phenomenal people of faith. You guys love the local church. You're involved in the local church. But due to what God has given you, you guys are also thrust into a lot of ungodly environments. A lot of people, you know, a lot of young people, all of us, you know, that's, a, that's kind of a, a point of tension. How do you, how do you balance that and and what are some, some, some things you would tell us when we're out, you know, in, in the world, you know? Yeah, it's so good. My mom gave me like such good advice for this whenever I was young and whenever we were, we spent a lot of time in LA in the first few years of everything. And you know, it's a different place when you go from like, LA, Louisiana, it's like LA, Hollywood. (laughs) It is not the same, let me tell you. Um, So anyways, great things there, great people, but yeah, it's a little crazy. So I remember my my mom told me, she said she would always laugh because people would always say, man, it's just so cool. Like whenever y'all, you know, got famous, y'all just like stood for Jesus, you know? And my mom would be like, yeah, we didn't just do that when we got famous. We've done that our whole life. It wasn't like a decision we made. Oh, now that we're famous, we're gonna be a Christian. That would actually be um, a pretty hard time to automatically just randomly decide, you know, to be a Christian. You know, it really was already who we are, Mm -hmm. which is, I was just telling that same girl backstage, I was saying, you know, if you wanna be a speaker, like start speaking now to your friend group. Start, start encouraging your friends. Go on Instagram, post a story of like Bible verses, like pursue that before you pursue that stage. And so it's the same thing with Christianity. It's like, if you are a Christian now and then you happen to get famous one day, then you should still be a Christian. My mom said this, she said, 
Christianity is not something you just wake up and pick and choose which day you wanna be that. She said, if you gave your life to Jesus, you gave your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's no matter where you are. That's no matter what happens in your life. That's a decision you made, just like marriage. That's like based off of, we have no idea what the next, how many years of our life are gonna look like. We made a decision to stay married. So that's like Christianity. If you made a decision to give Mm -hmm. your life to God, it doesn't matter what room you're in, what conversation you're at, what party you're at, what city, state, whatever, you're a Christian always. And so you should always be that aroma of Christ, you know? And so, yeah, there are elements. I always say this, you know, people think it's so hard to be a Christian in dark spaces. I'm like, it's actually so easy to, because if there, if I put my flashlight on in this room, it would hold some power, but it's super lit. It wouldn't do that mm-hmm. much. This room was dark and I put this flashlight on, everybody would see the flashlight. And I think it's that way too in dark circumstances. You might be in a place where Christianity is not popular at all and you go in and be the light of the world and all of a sudden everybody's like, what is so different about you? Mm-hmm. And it's so easy to openly just say, man, I gave my life to Jesus and it changed everything. You know, I, I challenge Christians a lot at this, at this very juncture, the more we get out there in the, the darkened world, the deeper and the more mature we are spiritually. Sometimes Christians think erroneously, oh, I can just get in my holy huddle, us four and no more, and we'll flip off the rest of the world and tell them to spend eternity in hell. Well, I have grown, and I've gone to seminary and all this stuff, done some doctoral work, whatever. I've grown more by doing that. But, and and you said this backstage so well, you and Christian, as we were talking, you have to meet in areas that will not cause you to compromise. It it, it doesn't mean you, you, you run with people who don't know the Lord because, you know, the devil sells sizzle, but he never gives us the steak, you know? But, but it, it, it's, someone told me that. It's gonna look like a sizzling life, but I, what, what do you say about that? That's good. Uh, well, th- thank you. <laughs> so I, I can't help uh, but say, well, that's good. When I appreciate you say something it. Good. Um, no, but yeah, I think you're so right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there, you have to, as a Christian, I'll say this. Whenever I got asked to be in Dance with the Stars and I said yes, it was insane to me how much hate I got from the church that I would do that. Really? I mean, I'm just, oh. I have you always threw, danced your whole life? Never danced Okay, my I just life. wonder. You I actually never had danced ever. So th- th- I was very and you scared. Like, you were like in second place, but you became a number two, right? Yeah, that was a shock. To, and, that was a shock. I remember my dad said, Sadie, just try to make it to week three so it's not like embarrassing, you know? <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'll try. Yeah. Like, seriously, I didn't know it was gonna happen. <laughs> so praise God that there yes. was a danceability somewhere. But yeah, it was shocking that like everybody in the, it was not hate from the world, it was hate from the church. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because they couldn't believe that I would go to Hollywood and that I would do this show and it was so worldly and all this stuff. And I'm like, isn't that what we're kind of called to do is to go right. be the light of the world and go be the salt of the earth? Aren't we kind of supposed to go into these spaces and, and claim Jesus and preach? And, yes. and and I think that's sad that as a church, sometimes we want to just stay mm-hmm. in these walls. We want to just stay in our group instead of actually going out and like, being disciples of Jesus and going and preaching the gospel. Like Jesus said, like, go, preach the gospel, baptize them in my name. Like, that's what I wanna do, you know? And so I think, but we have to have a spiritual maturity to be able to do that. Yes. Because if you weren't you spiritually do. mature and mm-hmm. you went in that area, it would be really hard because it was hard out there. I mean, there were so many things. I remember um, once we got to the end, you had to do group dances, which is a little harder because whenever it was just me, I was able to say, I'm not doing that move <laughs> and I'm not wearing that dress. Mm. And then if, when it's a group dance, it's like, well, everybody's wearing it. Well, everybody's doing it. And I mean, that's the dance with the stars, but that's life. Like you're going to hear that so many times. Well, everybody's doing it. Well, everybody's wearing it. And you know, it's so easy to be like, oh yeah, well, Everybody is doing it, so it shouldn't be that bad if I do it. But I remember those were the times where I had to say, I understand everybody's doing it, and I do not want to disrespect the show, but I cannot do that. And Mm. it was awkward, but I always say, five seconds of awkward will save you a lifetime of regret. Because there are moments. Man, that's... I will say, 
That's great. We talked about this too. Uh, my cousin led a Bible study. And I was like in middle school and I went and she would always say mm-hmm. that. She said, put that tool in your toolbox. I've never heard that. So say that again. Five seconds of awkward will save you from a lifetime of regret. And I Drop really do the encourage- mic. <laughs> slap your neighbor appropriately. Man. <laughs> appropriately. I really you do You have to say that, that now. <laughs> Several years ago, you could just say slap your neighbor, but in this politically correct culture, Slap your neighbor appropriately. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Um, I haven't heard that one before. Well, um, but no, I do encourage young people hold on to that because there will be moments in your life where it will be really awkward to say no or to stand up for your faith or to respect yourself, you know. Um, but it will save you a lifetime of regret. I am so glad that in those moments I was like, I'm actually not going to do that because had I've done that, well, that would still be online for the millions of people to see every day. I don't want that, you know? Mm-hmm. And so you, it, decisions you make in you, your life will affect you later, you know? I, I, Jesus is so good. His grace is so good. His mercy is so good. You can go from death to life and your sins can be forgiven. So it's not, you know, if you make a mistake, it's okay. But at the same time, in those moments, it's so important to, you know, be truth, truthful and faithful to, to God if you made that decision. I like what you, you said at the uh, first service too. I mean, I like every, everything you said, Sadie, but we were talking about the importance of friends and how we have a kaleidoscopic range of friends in our lives. But we, we talked about the importance of, of Christian friends and we talked about how you guys love the church. That's your anchor. But, you know, the family, really, if you, if you kind of think about it, is a seminary because that's where those transcendent values should be taught and owned and you're a product of that and that's thrilling to to, to know that. So what have you done intentionally to build the right friendships? Now you're 23. Can you believe she's only 23 with this maturity and knowledge? Uh, That's just... That's God, and, and, and uh, what an inspiration for, for all of the young people here. Man. Okay, so well, what would you say about that, Thank about you. the yeah. the right friends? Yeah, that's so good. And what you said about family, too, is so important. And I want to encourage you, you know, for young people, I know it's so easy to be like, oh, they're just my family, you know. You don't want to listen to your mom. You don't want to listen to your grandparents or whoever it is. But, man, I'll tell you, it's so important. It really is. And I'm not saying that as, well, I guess I am a mom because I am pregnant. But I, I'm not saying that as an older, that great? like, mom. Um, I'm saying that as somebody who... who who, you know, mm-hmm. just recently walked through things that you walk through. And those relationships with your family mm-hmm. are so important. You'll probably notice I quoted my cousin already. I've quoted my mom. I quote my dad. I quote my great grandma. Like the things that they pour into me are the things that are flowing out. And so it is important to listen to that, you know, godly counsel. But yeah, friends are so important. I will say uh, the times that I've had good friends, I've been a way better person than the times I haven't. That's a fact. Um, that's just a fact. I will say though, that if you don't have friends, you know, it's okay. I've also been there too. I remember in high school, um, I, I'd always had a really, I love people. I love friends. Friends are like my, my happy spot. But in high school, all my friends that had literally been with me since like pre-K, uh, all of a sudden, whenever the show started and everything got busy, they just kind of walked away. And since then, like we've, you know, rekindled and it's been fine. But at the time that was so painful and I didn't have any friends and it, it was so weird. And this is interesting too, because as I gained like more followers than I ever thought I would have, I did not have friends. And that's really sad. And I think sometimes we can look at people on Instagram, we can look at famous people and say they have it all. But a lot of times they're the ones that are the most lonely. And Justin Bieber's song that just came out lonely. I mean, it's just so sad because it just shows that he was so lonely. But yet you look at him and you say, oh, he has 50 million followers. Yeah, but followers don't matter if you don't have friends, you Mm know? But at the time, I was so painful. And I remember everybody telling me, you know, don't worry, you know, when you go to college, like that's where you're gonna meet the friends of your lifetime. Like that's where you're gonna meet your girls, your bridesmaids. And when I decided I wasn't gonna go to college, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna have friends. Like, I'm not gonna have bridesmaids. Like, I'm not gonna have any people ever. And I was so dramatic, but I really was like so scared that I wasn't ever gonna have friends. Um, And at the time I really did in those, in that season in high school, really lean on my family. I got really close to my brother, really close to my cousins, really close to my parents. And 
you know, I'm really glad for that now. Mm -hmm. Hindsight 2020, thankful for that time, even though it was painful. Well, anyways, I didn't go to college, but I ended up moving to Nashville to really pursue ministry and what God had really been calling me to do. And it was there that I met my best friends in the world who are the people who have pushed me spiritually, who have called me out and who have called me to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. They are like all individually running their race. Like every single one of them could be on the stage right now and have a million drop the mic moments because they're just so in love with Jesus and it flows out of them. And I mean, they're amazing. And so those are the girls that ended up being my people. And I think that there's something to that. It was the moment that I actually started just you know, praying and seeking the Lord and I'd ask God for friends. But also it was the moment that I was like pursuing what he was calling me to do. And that's whenever I kind of found the people who were also doing that too. And so I think when you're a good friend and you're a good person, you start to find those good friends and good people. That's right. When you're pursuing the Lord, you start to all of a sudden start running beside people who are also pursuing the Lord. Yes. And so, you know, it's easy sometimes to, to get stressed out and think, am I ever gonna find those people? Well, just be that person first and those people will actually probably find you, you know? Great. All right, we gotta find, we gotta find out, don't we, how she met Christian Huff. How in the world did that happen? A unicorn, I tell you. It, it's pretty <laughs> magical. So has anybody been to Seaside, Florida? Anybody? Okay, great. You, you will get this moment because that is like my happy place. It's so beautiful. It's so magical. And that is where we met. And it makes me so happy. But he, um, he, his family's from there and I'm not, my family, my friends vacation there. And um, it was crazy. So I actually, this is kind of a short story. I have been dating this other guy and I was like, you know, I really knew I needed to break up with him. Like I knew it was time, mm -hmm. um, but we were long distance. So I needed to be in person. And this poor guy, you know, he's clueless. He didn't know it, did he? He's I know. Like, mm -hmm. He's so great. He really yeah. is a great guy. Yeah, he's great. I, no, I didn't mean that. That's not the way. <laughs> I knew it was time to break up with him, but I wanted to be in person to do mm -hmm. it. Cause you know, we were long distance and he happened to also be in Seaside. Look at that. So we're on a trip here. He comes there and I'm like, okay, I go and I end this relationship. And then after I end this relationship, I'm with like my girlfriends and I'm like, man, I am just done dating for a while. Like this is just, I just gotta stop, like the madness, you know? And so I'm like, I need to just take some time, be myself, be with the Lord. And then my friend's like, can I hold you to that? And I'm like, yes, I would love for you to. So she gets out her video camera and she says, say it again. I'm gonna do the video tape you saying this. So I said, okay. I said, this is Sadie Robertson and I'm gonna be seeing for a while and like make this huge statement. And then the next day, um, I was on the beach, uh, me and my friends, we decided to go crab hunting. And if you've ever been crab hunting, it's just like when you catch the crab with the net and then you just let the crab go. So it's not really hunting. It's just I wonder how many people though, just a straw poll, how many people have ever been crab hunting before? Okay, good, because some crowds Whoa. are like, what the heck is that? Uh, yeah, it's so fun though. So we were crab hunting and his cousin had messaged me on Instagram. She was friends with my little sister and said, hey, I see you're here. And I said, yeah, come crab hunting with us. So I said, we'll get extra nuts. So they, she came and brought Christian. And I mean, seriously, when I saw him, I was like, uh-oh. And <laughs> I like looked at my friend and I was like, delete the video. And <laughs> she was like, no, I'm not delete the video. She's like, do not, do not. So I was like, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so I avoid him all night. I mean, seriously, I did a great job to the point that I actually thought he was gonna start liking another one of my friends and I was so mad at myself for making that video. And then he came up to me at the end of the day and we were just talking and he mentioned something about how I had followed people in his family on Instagram but didn't follow him because mm -hmm. my sister is friends with several people in his family and I was like, oh yeah, really, hmm, interesting. So I follow him back. And then I get a little DM, like a little notification and I'm like, wow, that was like so fast. And then I realized I was actually just really slow because he had DM'd me two years before this moment. And it was like 2017 and he was like, hey, I just saw you at Passion. I love what God's doing in your life. And he's like, and I think you're so beautiful. And I'm like, okay, actually delete the video because we are totally dating. <laughs> um, 
and it was awesome. But I, but I say this every time I, when I tell that story. You know, I, I had this moment where I knew I needed to not date, and and it wasn't really dating that was the problem. It was just how I was dating. And so for girls and guys who are single or who are dating, you know, it's so important to date well. It really is. It's so important to date people who are equally yoked, who are also running yes. after the Lord. And I remember with Christian, what surprised me so much about him that was different than other people I dated. When I dated somebody, I would date nice people, but not so much spiritual. You know, mm-hmm. I would be the one saying like, oh, let, let's talk about this. Have you read this? You know, have you seen this sermon? All, all these different things. And I would wanna kind of spark these mm-hmm talks about Jesus, but they weren't really going into much depth. But with Christian, he was the one saying, have you read this? Let me send you this sermon. Let me, you gotta read this book. And there's pushing me in my faith. And so we were really running the same pace. And then, you know, we just started running it together. And I think that that's so beautiful whenever you're looking for somebody to, to date. If you are pursuing the Lord, you gotta find someone who's pursuing the Lord too and wait for that. I promise you, like, you might think they're not out there. There's nobody in my high school. Well, there might not be somebody in your high school. But wait for that, you know? I mean, if you're doing that, other people are too. And I'm so glad it's so worth the wait. And Christian and I dating well and dating pursuing the Lord really set us up for a great start to our marriage. And I think, you know, if you're dating with the intention of marriage, you need to make sure that that person has the qualities of somebody you would actually want to do your life with. That's the truth. Man. Well, Sadie, we are um, about out of time and we want to have you back very, very soon. But I just wonder if you would just look right here. Um, those are our cameras at all of our campuses online and some other places. I just wondered if you would give people an opportunity to give their lives to Christ, to begin to follow him and, and maybe just uh, lead in a prayer where, where we could do that. It's great, yeah. Um, you know, I'll say for me personally, I, you know, always grew up in a Christian family and I knew Jesus, I knew about Jesus. I actually loved Jesus, but it wasn't until, you know, I guess I have a moment when I was 13 that I got to share Jesus with somebody and that was a powerful moment. And I remember thinking, I'm giving my life to you, Jesus. Uh, but then life kind of happened, you know, things got hard. I started struggling with deep anxiety, like panic attacks, like it was crazy. It's really dark and just kind of walking away from, from Christ. You know, I think sin is like anything that separates you from Christ. And there was a lot of things in my life that separated me from Christ. Uh, but I was, when I was 17, I was at this conference and I remember hearing this woman speak and I just thought it was the first time I heard a woman speak. And she just really led me to Jesus. And I thought, wow, you know, I've always loved Jesus. I've always known about Jesus. But when I read the Bible and I hear about people dropping everything to follow Jesus, that's something I have not done. And that's something I wanna do. You know, I wanna, I wanna drop all these things and take Jesus at his word, take God at his word and pursue him. I, I wanna be convicted for my sin. I don't wanna walk in that anymore. I wanna walk with Jesus. And so that was the best moment of my whole life. And that moment, moment has led to some of the other best moments in my life, like the man that I married and, and different things. And so for you, if you haven't made that decision to, to really follow Jesus, maybe you've been in church your whole life. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I wasn't expecting this. You know, I love Jesus. I follow Jesus, but I haven't really dropped everything and followed him. I haven't really t- took him at his word. I haven't walked with him. I've watched him. I haven't walked with him. Maybe today, this is, this is your moment to do that. You know, just in short, but it's so powerful. Um, I just wanna remind you of the gospel that we have this good, good father who loves us so much and loved his son so much that he sent his one and only son that to come and literally die a death on a cross to forgive us of our sins. And that's like a really huge thing. I think that we hear that so much, sometimes we forget the gravity of it. Sometimes I think that we know something so well that we actually fail to realize the, the power in it. And that's one of those things that Jesus Christ 
loved us so much and his father loved us so much that he would die a death for us to take away our sin. People say to me all the time, they say, Sadie, I don't know if I can actually follow Jesus because I have so much sin. I'm like, well, that's why you should follow Jesus. Like people are like, I don't know if they have gone too far. That's another reason why you should come to Jesus because Jesus will forgive you of your sin. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. The only way to get to the Father, that perfect relationship with the Father is to come through me because he's forgiven given you of your sin. He died the death and then the most amazing thing is he raised back from the grave. Y'all, he defeated death. He took away our sin and he went back to heaven and we get to share an eternity with him. And not only that, but after that, he sends his Holy Spirit to be with us, to walk with us. And I know right now, especially in a year like 2020, where it's been so hard, there's so many times we're like, man, Jesus, I wish you'd just come back. Like, Jesus, I wish you were just here. But Jesus literally said to his disciples, he said, it's actually better for y'all that I go because of who's coming, who I'm sending with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna remind you today that if you're walking with Jesus, you're walking with the Holy Spirit. And I know you crave Jesus, but his presence is here today with you. And so, man, that's the story of the gospel. That's what we're inviting you into. That's that death to life transformation, the old self made new thing. And if you wanna be a part of that, today can be your day. You know, it can happen for in a moment for anybody. It happened for me. I'm sure it happened for you. It happened for a Christian. And we want that for you too. We want your life to be lived to the full. And so I'd love to pray with everyone today. If you're making that decision, maybe for the first time, God, we just thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you that you are a good, good father, that we get to call out to you, Abba, Father. God, I thank you that you're not only a father, but you are just sovereign over all the earth, God. You are the king of glory. God, I thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross, God, to forgive us of our sins so that we would have the hope of eternity with you. God, I thank you that you sent your spirit to dwell within us, God, and to walk with us every day of our life. God, to give us peace that surpasses all understanding, to give us joy, to give us love, to give us faith. God, in a time where joy, peace, and love is not very seen, God, it is found in you. It's not found in fame. It's not found in money. It's not found in success. It's found in you, Jesus. So today I pray that if people were pursuing different things to get to those things, God, I pray that today they would shift. God, that they would, they would make a 180 turn, God, that they would repent, God, which simply means to turn, face your direction and pursue you. God, I pray for those people who are agreeing with me in prayer. Your word says we're two or three are gathered there you are, so we know you're here. It also says if two or three can even agree on anything, it will be done. So God, we just agree with each other that God, in this moment, as people give their life to you, that they are going from death to life, God. I pray that they would pursue baptism, that they would pursue a walk with you, God, that it wouldn't just be in this moment as they pray in their heart, but they would confess with their mouth and God, that they would surround themselves with people who would walk with them daily, God. A church family, like he said, that they would plant themselves in the church, God, and raise not only their life, but their family's life up in you. Jesus, I pray that after this moment, they would never be the same. Lord, fill them with your spirit. Walk with them, God. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Amen.